Well, uh, good morning again. Um, I thought I'd just do a, uh, a quick video for an update. Um, been quite interesting, actually. So what I've done, I've um, reconfigured the radio, ready to do some transmit tests. Um, so what we have effectively is the... In fact, I'll just sort of uh, draw, draw a picture and then look at the various components. Um, at the moment, the antenna's coming in. It's going through... A, a relay here, that's that big one sitting just over the back right next door to the antenna jack and what that, that's doing is it's switching the antenna between what will be uh, the receive amp and the power amplifier um, we also have another relay down here just on the uh, input or the output depends which way you're going, obviously transmit or receive of uh, the bandpass filter system uh, and that what that does there is it shears the bandpass filter uh, between the receive side or the transmit. So at the moment the transmitter um, is not built uh, and in this video here we'll look at the microphone amplifier and some low power um, signals but that part there uh, effectively is not built and it'll be the output of that yellow wire there potentially in this area here and then coming through um, the unused normally open uh, contact on that relay. The other thing which I have played around with and it's been quite interesting in uh, you may recall in an earlier configuration what I'm doing is I'm sharing this IF amplifier, the crystal filter and the second IF amp between the transmit and the receive circuitry. Um, so I had down here at one stage a single pole double throw relay which was causing some grief. So I've now broken that out to be two um, single pole double throw relays and we'll look to see how effective that is. Um, and what that effectively allows us to do, so ignore this big arrangement here, but the way this was originally configured, this relay and that relay, is this one down here, that black one there, and this black one here. So on receive, um, our RF have come in, we mix with the um, VFO, uh, our IF would come out through the amp, back through and into our product detector uh, on the receive side. On transmit, the relays would toggle over, and then um, our IF coming out of the balance modulator would then be fed around, back through, out the side, and back out through the mixer where it's mixed up to our desired RF. Um, and we'll look to see how effective that is uh, in a sec. So getting to the actual microphone circuit, uh, what I elected to do is keep it quite simple. and I've just used a, uh, a 3904. Um, and uh, so what I've done there is, what I've done is, uh, potentially in the past, the microphone I'm using is a 500 ohm microphone, so I want the Z in of the amplifier to be roughly 50 ohms. Um, I know R and R2, R1 and R2 for the voltage divided biasing will be reasonably high, and as Z in is approximately R1 in parallel with R2 in parallel with beta RE, then my determining factor mainly for the Zn will be the beta RE. So I want beta RE to be around 500 ohms. Noting that RE is 26 millivolts over IE. So if I take that to be the case, I want 500 ohms. Um, and also for beta, uh, where are we? The beta for this, um, uh, it's way down at, uh, at AF. It's only not up at RF, so I'm going to use a beta of 150 off the spec sheet. Um, what I can do then is I can feed that into here, beta RE equals 500, and solve for IE, which comes out to be about 7.8 milliamps. So having known that, I can then start to work out the various components. So starting with uh, our emitter resistor, again setting the emitter voltage to be a tenth of VCC, so roughly 1.38 volts. So 1.38 volts at 7.8 milliamps gives me 176, so I'll use 180 ohms. For R2, uh, this one here, um, normal story, our voltage here plus 0.7, and then flowing through here we want 10 times the base current to make this voltage divided bias to be nice and stiff. So uh, 7.8 milliamps divided by 150 will give us our, our base current, so 10 times that. So basically... 1.38 plus 0.7 divided by that current will give us a value of 4,000 ohms. So we'll use the nearest standard value of 3,900. Um, as we've seen before, 
our R1. Uh, that's going to be 13.8 um, volts minus that voltage there. I'm going to ignore at this stage the voltage drop across that 10 ohm resistance, uh, resistor. It's next to nothing, so it's approximately 13.8 uh, will be sitting here. So 13.8 volts minus the voltage at the base divided by now 11 times the base current. I use electron flow. So the current flowing through here was 10 times. It gets to this point. There's another one being added to it. So it's now 11 times. So 11 times the base current um, under that voltage drop gives us uh, 20489 ohms. So I'll use 20k ohms. Uh, the uh, collector resistor, I'm going to set the collector voltage to be roughly half times VCC. There's different trains of thought there. Some people like to have it halfway between VCC and um, the emitter resistor, or the emitter voltage I should say, uh, which keeps us well and truly away from uh, driving this into uh, reverse bias. But uh, from my rule of thumb, I'm just going to roughly go with a half VCC, uh, and I just won't run it all the way up to the rails. So having said that, so VC divided by 2 equals 6.9 volts, divided by our, our um, emitter, volt, uh, emitter current, noting that emitter current is essentially the same as the collector current, the only difference is uh, a few microamps, which is the base current, so for all intents and purposes we can use that, comes to 884 and we'll use 820 ohms. Uh, for this, for this case, I'm just going to straight out bypass the emitter resistor and as we've seen before, as a, as a starting point, um, if that uh, capacitive reactance is less than 100 ohms, know that Xc is 1 over, 1 over 2 pi Fc, then I can solve for our lowest frequency, which I want to be 300 hertz. Because um, obviously as the frequency goes down, Xc goes up, so for our lowest frequency is 300. I can solve and come out with 5.3 microfarads, so I'll just use 10. Uh, and for the two coupling capacitors coming in and going out, I'll also use um, 10 microfarads. Also on the uh, the back um, is a, just a very simple RC um, low pass filter. So we've set that for a, um, a minus 3 dB point of um, of 3 kilohertz. So our 3 dB point for an RC low pass filter is 1 over 2 pi RC. Um, I'm just going to set R to be 1000. Um, I've got quite a bit of gain, so I don't mind the slight um, drop across that. And if we solve for our capacitor, then we get 53 nanofarads. So I'll use 47 nanofarads. Um, that was um, simulated on LT Spice. And in the end, I actually didn't make any changes at all on that one. So that's now been soldered up, and uh, and that's what we see here. So our microphone socket here, yellow is the incoming uh, audio um, into our coupling capacitor through the uh, 3904, through that's the uh, one one k ohm resistor and the 47 nanofarad capacitor, and then out it goes. Uh, we do have an additional relay there uh, that I've decided to put in. Uh, in the past I haven't bothered, but this one I've decided just to uh, to throw it back in. And what that effectively does is it shears uh, the AF port from the mixer between transmit, which is yellow, or receive, which is grey. So that grey wire there runs across to our audio amplifier. So that's just essentially just a toggling switch, uh, just isolating the receive and uh, the transmit from our, um, we're switching more to the point, that audio source to our balance modulator or product detector depending if you're on transmit or receive. Now, so from just doing a, a quick transmit test, so at the moment, and again we'll talk about uh, this, this switch arrangement here, at the moment we're keyed, so the switch is down, um, our audio is going through the microphone, through our a balance modulator, coming across, it's going through our IF amplifier, through the crystal filter, it's coming back across, um, back across to here, it's being switched up to our desired RF frequency, uh, which is 14.21, uh, through our bandpass filter, and then through that switching relay, uh, coming out the little white wire there, say again yellow wire there, 
and that's just loosely coupled through to the dummy load on the input of um, the rig over here. So if we just turn that rig volume up, let's bring that in the picture. We can hear the uh, the frequency there. So all I've got there is just a microphone sitting in the uh, in the drawer there, with a, an MP3 player uh, close to the microphone, just uh, playing some audio in. So, um, so I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, I'm happy with uh, the modulation depth and the, and the amount of amplification um, and uh, and the rest. Uh, and we we'll, won't revisit that until such time as we have the main power amplifier built. Now, so coming back to this big switch here. Um, you may recall on an earlier video we had problems with, or oh, I talked about problems with a, um, a double pole double throw relay that I was using in order to shear the IF amplifiers and the crystal filter between transmit and receive. Um, the, the double pole double throw switch was effectively uh, configured like this so on receive, um, RF came in, mixed down to our IF, three amplifiers, out the other side into our product detector, and then out as our received AF. On transmit, it would go the other way around, we would produce our IF, uh, and because this is a crossover network here, we we'll come across here, it would now be made this way, through amplifier, down the side, across, through our, RF, uh, through our final mixer, and then out the RF. Um, and that's what, okay, so I had initial problems with the um, original configuration with having a single relay, I was having feedback, and that feedback I was effectively having is what you hear this, is that. So that noise is on receive, through here, at this point here we've got quite a high level of um, IF, um, because it's come through both levels of amplification. And because of that contact there, there's enough capacitance there, or the capacitance is such that there's enough leakage getting through there, and we've met the Barkhausen criterion, and we're oscillating. Um, so, breaking that initial earlier radio design with a single double pole double throw relay into two single pole double throw relays, which is effectively here. So electrically it's the same configuration, but mechanically it's now separated, those two poles, we're getting exactly the same problem. So what I decided to do, and this is the reason why these aren't wired up, is I thought, okay, well how about I throw in this big old mechanical switch here, um, because it's, it's, it's physically larger, and I was hoping that uh, the distance between the normally open contacts would be enough to actually stop that leakage getting through and as you can hear it didn't it's um, it's still enough in there to cause the feedback so I went to one extra sip just to double check that I was actually getting what I thought I was getting uh, and I threw uh, a switch effectively into here so when this RF comes back around to here there's a dirty old big switch in there and vice versa on this side a big old dirty switch there and these these two big uh, switches here so we bring the relay in, I open one, it's it's not quite, you can just see it's starting to build up there, I open the other one, and we're back to we're all back to normal. So it's back to if, if uh, we didn't have that crossover at all. Put them back in again, and we're back into feedback. So that's going to uh, mean I'm going to get back to, or go back to the drawing boards a little bit, and just think about... Um, my desire and the feasibility of sharing the IF amps, the crystal filter um, for both transmit and receive, or should I go for a more traditional architecture of having um, dedicated IF amps for receive and dedicated IF amps for transmit, which I think I'm going to do. Um, I won't do at this stage the game bilateral amplifiers which are all built together, I'm going to have them um, separated um, and what they will also allow me to do is to simplify a little bit the AGC over here um, I modified the AGC circuit um, subtly and just put a little 
uh, relay here and that just opens circuits the signal that's coming from our detector going through to the DC amplifier um, the output of that uh, 10 K ohm resistor is now uh, through that little relay there so on transmit the relay opens and that's disconnected the AGC basically thinks that it's in a no signal condition and drives the output which is the gain for the um, IF amps to full gain so on transmit they're a full gain um, on receive obviously that closes we now have a signal going across here and um, the AGC circuit uh, operates uh, as per normal depending on the signal strength coming in so that'll, that'll free that one up um, these two relays here will, will move they will now move to the input and the output of the crystal filter and it will just switch the crystal filter between receive IF amps or transmit IF amps um, I don't think I'll, I'll get in the game of um, having those permanently paralleled up what else will, will simplify um, obviously this whole arrangement here uh, will disappear um, and then we can go back to using this brown wire here which is the, the PTT on the, the microphone itself so that's uh, the next steps um, so that's been quite interesting actually it's the first time I've had that problem with, uh, with this configuration so you know, I must have quite a bit more gain uh, on the IF amps than I've had in the past anywho um, that's fine, it's all about experimenting, it's all about learning and trying different things so um, no problems there so I'll say 73, thanks very much, any questions please sing out um, if you're finding these um, videos interesting and useful please say so, um, I certainly like the feedback otherwise um, um, you know, I don't know how to sort of tailor them to make them of use It's a lot of it's sort of my rambling about what I'm sort of doing and what I'm thinking and what I'm, I'm sort of finding but um, if that's useful and sort of helps others then that's fantastic, I'm, uh, that's what it's all about. Okay, again 73's and uh, we shall see you next time. Cheers all.